week, and it's something that touches us all, whether we are pet owners or not. It's Pet Theft Awareness Week. It started on March the 14th. It runs all the way through to the 21st, and it's going to give us some fantastic advice, but also say how you can help end the blight, the curse, the heartbreak of pet theft here in the UK. Delighted to welcome back to Talk Radio to tell us more about this leading animal campaigner and pet theft awareness campaigner as well. Karen Field joins us. Good morning, Karen, and thank you so much for doing this for us. Good morning, Paul. That's fine. Thanks very much for giving me the opportunity to tell you a little bit about it all. Now, this is a heartbreaking subject because you kind of think, given the awareness of it that you've been promoting, that we've been talking about on this show for years now and on this station, we still need Pet Theft Awareness Week. What is it you're trying to achieve with the week? What would you like to see changed in the law? Right, well, what um, the people are trying to achieve, it's an initiative by the Pet Theft Awareness Group, um, and that includes AppDog, which is the all-party parliamentary dog advisory welfare group. So it's nice that it's AppDog for yeah. short. Yeah. Um, and under that group, um, there are Stolen and Missing Pets Alliance group, um, Dr. Ross Thompson, um, John Cooper QC, who is the legal advisor for SAMPA, um, the campaigner Mark Abrahams, who de dealt with Lucy's Law. And We've spoken to Mike many times on this program and on this station. He's a leading yeah. vet as well. He's a great campaigner and a great vet. Yeah. And also Dr. Daniel Allen, um, who was the instigator of the Pet Theft Reform Bill, yeah. um, which is still waiting for its second reading in Parliament because of um, the Brexit. Um, so today, um, or yesterday, there's another petition that's hit, um, which is the one that we really need to get the government to change the law for. Because at the moment, I mean, let's say at the moment, yeah. I think I might say, if, if somebody steals your dog or your cat, God forbid, yeah. it's just like they've stolen a vase or a bike or something. They don't take into account the heartache and heartbreak this causes for the pet and for families. No, they treat it just like an inanimate object, like a TV, mobile phone, theft, um, when really it's the theft of a pet and it's the theft of a family member. Yeah. Now, to give people some advice on this one, we don't want to just be negative on this, we should remind people, I think I'm right in saying that more than half of dogs are actually stolen from people's gardens, so be aware of that, folks, but one in five is stolen still, 90% when people break into homes, sometimes just to get the dogs, because these animals are very valuable, aren't they, Karen? They are, and it's not just homes, it's cars, yeah. vans, wherever... And, and it, a lot of it is opportunistic. Yeah. They see a dog in the back of a car. There was two chihuahuas taken today from the back of a four before, oh, no. where the owner had just got out of the car, um, literally seconds, and they took um, the dogs. They've still not come back, but obviously we've um, now spread the word amongst the thousands of volunteers that do this every day. Well, I often retweet stuff that I see you guys have put out and about there because it's about getting the message out there. Yep. The other thing I think that is important to mention, I think one in 20, slightly more than one in 20 of dog thefts happen when people leave their dogs, often only for minutes, tethered outside shops. Yep. And something I think people can do is if you've got the time, I'm not trying to be holier than that, but I've done this once or twice. If you've got the time and you see a dog outside a shop or a supermarket, it doesn't hurt to just wait beside it until no. the owner comes back, because then you can actually make sure you've seen what's going on. And I think if you're standing beside the dog, it puts people off who might want to pinch it. Yeah, and the thing is, it's um, a lot of elderly people yeah. that take the dogs with them to the shops yeah. to give the dog exercise, to get the dogs out, to meet people, to talk. But unfortunately, years ago, you could do that. Now you can't because there will be a van driving past down the road. They will see that dog there and they'll get out of the van and they'll take the dog. And we should also of that in seconds. And we should also remind people to be very careful if you think you've found a stray cat because under British law, and although the penalties aren't strict enough, theft by finding is a crime. So you need to make an effort to find out if a cat's been, you know, if it's been registered lost somewhere yep. or whatever. If you don't just think I'm doing some, I'm doing this cat a favour, you may be depriving a family of their beloved cat. This is it. A lot of people take the cats in, they think they're not being fed, they stray into the gardens and they think it's a stray. Um, but no, you've got to always check and make sure um, just ring up a vet. You can always take the cat to be scanned at the vet. The vets will do it. Uh, free of charge um, so yeah always check now now would you and the other campaigners Karen like 
pet theft to be a specific crime under British law, not just yeah. be covered by the Theft Act. Yeah, and today um, we have been sharing a new petition right. that's been um, put out by Dr Daniel Allen, and that's to amend the Animal Welfare Act of 2006 so that pet theft becomes a specific offence in its own right and separate from just inanimate objects like your TV, etc. And I think this and has been proposed by the MP Ross Thompson, hasn't it, in his pet theft bill? Uh, yes, it is. Um, and then that will allow the courts to give a sentence of up to two years. Yeah. Because now, the, the, when people even are getting charged with stealing the pet, they're, not, they're, they're getting a fine or they're getting a five-year ban. That's not good enough. It's not deterring people. And there are a couple of loopholes, I think, in regulations we've got now about, for example, microchipping dogs. When we've spoken in the past, I learnt uh, that it's compulsory to microchip dogs, but it's only optional for vet yep. practices to scan them. And that seems yep. to me crazy. It should be actually a matter of course. If yep. you take a dog into a vet or into another animal-related organisation, then it should be on the, the onus of law should be on them to scan it to make sure you're a rightful owner. That's right. And there is another petition out at the moment to make it compulsory for vets to scan any dog that comes into a vet. Yeah. Um, because unfortunately, in the past, somebody has taken a dog into a vet to be put to sleep, yeah. and they weren't the registered keeper of the dog. Oh, that's so awful, yeah, isn't it? The it's family are, are longing, pining to get their dog back, and it's been, it's been put down erroneously. Um, the other thing, I suppose, is about the value of some breeds. Now, we know that some breeds can be very valuable if they're pedigrees or they're fashionable or whatever, yeah. but, of course, other dogs are given a much lower value. I think that's unfair, isn't it? I mean, a dog should be a dog, and it means... Yes. It doesn't matter if it's cost you 50 quid or five grand, no, it it's a family matter. member. It doesn't matter how much the dog costs. You lose your dog, you've lost part of your family, and you can't, you can never rest until that dog is back with your family. And you will do anything, and you will put up rewards, yeah. um, which is not really a good idea. But the families really, really don't know what to do. They just want their dog back. And as time goes on, it gets worse. But you can't move on with your life. It's dreadful. I mean, one of the other problems, I suppose, is, is facing police forces in this country, many of which, many police stations, well, some have closed down, but many simply don't have facilities to keep or even look after dogs if they're dubious about whether the person who's with them is the owner. That's so right. I do wonder whether sometimes these, these characters are given the benefit of the doubt because simply yeah. the police can't look after the dog. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that um, there is a lot of that. And obviously, the police haven't got the resources either to even go out and look for a dog. I mean... You report a dog missing, yeah. it's given, if it's only given a crime number, if you can prove that that dog is stolen. So that's either by seeing it picked up on CCTV, um, having your house broken into. Right. If not, you can't get a crime number. So there was 1,678 dogs registered as stolen last year in the whole of the UK. But that number is far higher because a lot of these people who had the, they lost their dogs for whatever reason they could have been picked up sold on so that number i'm sure is a lot higher i mean the thing about it is to give people some idea about this and this is only an average figure but in england and wales alone I think over 60 dogs a week are stolen. That's almost 10 a day, Karen. I mean, that's yeah. absolutely appalling. But only, I think, what, one in 20 cases, 5% lead to convictions. Yeah. It's disgraceful. And it's going up. It's, every, it's, it's gone up um, every year since the figures started being collated in, I think it's 2015. Okay, now there's the Stolen and Missing Pets Alliance we mentioned, which is SAMPA yeah. as well. Um, where can people find more about this on Twitter, for example, Karen? Where can people find you? Yeah, um, you, you do, well, just Google Sampa, yeah. Google Karen Field. Um, on Facebook, they've also got the Facebook groups as well. Um, obviously, Dr. Daniel Allen, um, Mark um, Abrahams, um, AppDog, just Google any of those. And if anybody wants to have a look at the three petitions that yeah. are going at the moment, um, shall I give you the um, addresses? If you've got it to hand, please, Karen. Yes, Cara. I have. Yeah, it's 
petition.parliament.uk right. forward slash petitions. Right. The first one is number 244530. 244530. Yeah, and that's for the Animal Welfare Act to be amended. Yeah. Um, the second one is Petition Parliament UK Petitions, and the number is 229004. So I'll give that again, 229004. Yeah, 229004. And that's for cats that are killed or injured by a vehicle yeah. that they are automatically checked. Check for a chip. Yeah. And the last again, one... Again, I should say, it's not compulsory at the moment for cats no, to be chipped, is it? Would, do you think that should happen? Um, yes, it should. Well, yeah. actually, I think it is compulsory oh, okay. for mistake. them to be chipped, but they're not always checked for a chip if they're um, injured or killed right. on the roads. So that should happen. And what's the final number of the final petition, um, Karen? The final petition is 235831. Yeah. And that's the vets to scan any dog that comes into a vet for a chip before um, it's put to sleep and also um, to make pick, make them aware that they are the registered keeper of the dog. OK, so it's Pet Theft Awareness Week. It started yesterday, March the 14th. It runs right the way through until March the 21st. You can get involved. If you go to, to find out more, go to pettheft.org.uk. That's pettheft.org.uk. And that's one of the country's leading animal rights campaigners and anti-pet theft campaigner.